Hello and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, this is pre-calculus. We are working our way steadily through uh, chapter two from the pre-calculus book by Demana Waits Foley Kennedy. And uh, we are talking about rational functions today. And we are focusing on, first of all, what is a rational function? Well, shockingly enough, a rational function has to do with a ratio, or uh, some might say a fraction, that's made of, not a fraction, but a fraction that's made of two polynomials, or at least can be written uh, as a fraction of two polynomials. So uh, an example might be uh, x plus 3 over 7x minus 4. That is a rational function. Um, in a technical way, I suppose you could even consider x plus 3 over 1 a rational function, although nobody does look at it that way. Uh, technically, 1 is a polynomial. It's not very exciting. And the reason that nobody really looks at these as rationals, even though it kind of fits the definition, is because the excitement for rationals comes when you look at the denominator. And, you know, if a denominator ever gets to be zero, that's a problem. So there are vertical asymptotes involved there. So just a reminder back to uh, um, section 1, 2, uh, the denominator can't be zero uh, so that in when that happens, either we get a hole or a, an asymptote, some kind of a discontinuity. Okay? Um, some other examples uh, might be uh, uh, y equals 2 over x, um, uh, x squared plus 3x minus 7 over x minus 5. Uh, I mean, there, any, anything that deals with uh, a fraction with x in the denominator. So uh, that's really not considered. A, a rational equation, even though you can write this as x over 2, for the same reason there, there, there's no variable in the denominator. So we don't really think of that as rational. Okay? Um, I do want to point out something that doesn't look rational, but actually is. Uh, for instance, this. It's kind of like a mixed number. The mi the, uh, it's like the mixed number for rational functions, and the idea here is that I could write this, uh, remember this is over 1, if I get a common denominator here, then this becomes 2x plus 4 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 2, which means I could write this 2x plus 5 over x plus 2. So th this is definitely rational. And what that means is what was originally here in blue is rational because it is a function that can be written as the ratio of two polynomials. Okay? All right. Um, this is actually uh, what we're going to talk about next, transformations of y equals 1 over x. This, uh, I got a little excited and started working on this back in my little video for section 2.4. I think it was 2.4a. So if you want to look for another example, uh, there is another one in that video, and I think it's fairly close to the beginning. Uh, so, probably not at the very, um, I don't know. Okay, so the idea here is that if I have the equation y equals 1 over x, I know some specifics about how that thing looks. This is one of the 10 basic functions that we talked about in Chapter 1. Uh, it has a vertical asymptote x uh, equals 0. It has a horizontal asymptote y equals 0, its domain corresponds uh, to that, and range corresponds to that, etc. Now, I can move this equation around uh, doing things about transformations, like for instance, if I multiply the outside of this equation by 2 and uh, add 1 to it, then I have done a vertical stretch of factor 2, so it's a little taller. Okay, and then I've also moved it up 1, so now the horizontal asymptote becomes y equals 1 instead of y equals 0. And so uh, vertical stretch of 2, uh, shift up 1, so let's say transformation on 1 over x. Now here's the problem. It's never going to look like that. So instead, it would be something like... Uh, if I do 2 over 1 times 1 over x, that's going to be 2 over x plus x over x. Think about where that x over x came from. So this is really 2 plus x over x. And normally we would probably write that x plus 2 over x. So 
account, going back to what we are knew from back in section one of ch or section two of chapter one, uh, the domain of this would still be x not equal to zero because of the denominator. And we did that thing where we kind of match things up. And uh, so the horizontal asymptote would be y equals one. So the range is probably y not equal to one. Well, the things that we're writing here uh, should make sense with uh, what we just said about the shifts. Now the only problem is is that you can't see the vertical stretch of 2. So here's the issue. It needs to be in this form. Okay, so let me ask a related question. Uh, let me, uh, look, we're going to do another example. Okay, so what if we have y equals uh, 3x plus 2 over x minus 7? Okay, so I want to know what transformations happened to the parent function y equals 1 over x. Okay, so I want you to take a second and just pause the video, and I want you to take a guess at what it is based on what you can see right now. Okay, well, this is, this is the official way to actually figure it out. What we're going to do is do a little division and so we can change the form of this equation. Okay, so here we go. Um, so I'm going to, what times x is 3x? 3, 3 times x. So I'm going to distribute. <coughs> Excuse me. And then remember, I have to subtract. So I'm adding the opposite. So this is uh, goodbye, and 2 plus 21 is 23. So this is y equals 3 plus 23 over x minus 7. Okay, now, not so obvious in this form, but this is pretty, pretty good. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this, y equals 23 times 1 over x minus 7 plus 3. Okay, so what happened? Well, there's a 23 times on the, out, on the outside, so that's a vertical stretch of 23. That's a big stretch. It shifted right 7 and up 3. Now, just a couple quick notes. If we go back to the original equation, you could probably see, because the vertical asymptote is 7, you could probably see that shift right of 7. Because the horizontal asymptote is 3x over x, y equals 3, you might even be able to guess that vertical shift up 3. The, the real problem is, is that I don't see any way that you would have figured out that vertical stretch of 23. I, I, I just don't see it. So you need to do some division. Now, some of you I know are saying to yourself, I could have done synthetic division, and you absolutely could have. Because it was x minus 7, we could have put 7 in a box. Okay, so this would have been 3 plus 23 over x minus 7. And then the rest of what we just did follows from what we just did, uh, from, you know, how we handled it just a second ago. Okay, so uh, worth seeking out examples like that, and uh, that obviously is something that will be on the test. Okay, there's another big topic in this section, and that is solving rational equations, uh, or in other words, finding the zeros of rational functions. Okay. Okay, so a rational equation or a rational function, rational equation in this case, is an equation made up of rational expressions, rational terms, or something that could be written as uh, ratios like that. So just the fact that that x is in the bottom of the 12 makes this a rational equation. Okay. Now, here's the issue. Most of us do not like fractions. I mean, fractions happen. You know, if we could make a bumper sticker. But the fact is, is that we, we don't like dealing with them. So generally, the first recommendation on this is get rid of the fractions. And since we are able to multiply both sides of an equation by anything, any number that we want, we're going to multiply both sides by something that makes the fractions divide out, makes the denominators divide out. So generally what you do is multiply both sides by whatever the least common denominator is. Please note that I, I'm not actually going to make all of these fractions into that denominator. The goal is to make the denominators go away. 
Okay, so, so what it'll do is give us a common factor, and so again, all of the denominators uh, will, or at least should, if we're doing it right, uh, divide out. Or some people would say cancel. I know there are a lot of math people that hate that word because people start canceling stuff that doesn't cancel. All right, so I'm going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. Well, the least common denominator has to have all factors, factors, of all denominators. Well, the only denominator here is x. So it just needs the common denominator for this is pretty straightforward. It's x. So every single term gets multiplied by x. So x times 2x, x times 12 over x. Now, I'm going to do a little aside here. x times 12, that does not look like a 12. That looks like pi. Know what came over me. It's all that pumpkin pie I've been eating. Well, x divided by x is 1, so 1 times 12 is 12, so ultimately this is just plus 12 equals, now don't forget to multiply by your denominator on the right also. Okay, so lo and behold, this is now a section 2.1 problem. This is actually an algebra 2, even an algebra 1 problem. So we're going to solve this. So the thing to note is we have uh, an exponent of 2, so this is a quadratic. Uh, typically, we solve quadratics in standard form. Okay, so I just subtracted 11x from both sides. Um, we could factor this, or we could do quadratic formula. I know some of you are looking at this saying, I don't like a being not 1, so I'm going to do quadratic formula. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, Signs have to be the same. They have to be minus. Uh, factors of... 24 that subtract to 11. Sorry, add to 11. Probably 3 and 8 is my goal, is my guess. So uh, I don't know. Let's let's just try some stuff. So I need I need to be 12 here. So let's do like that. Uh, so this ends up being negative 8x. And this is negative 3x. That adds up to negative 11x. Woohoo! Got it. All right, so 2x minus 3 could be 0. Or x minus 4 could be 0. So 2x could be 3. x could be 3 over 2. I know some of you would rather write that 1.5. Uh, x could be 4. Okay. Okay, now before you get too excited, there's... There's a big butt coming. Not such a big butt for this one, but there is a big butt. Must check all possible solutions if uh, any of them make denominator equal zero. They or it. Uh, is extraneous. Uh, nope, got too many A's in there. Extraneous. Extraneous means that it, it's extra and it's aneous. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that means. Uh, it's extra and erroneous. It's extra and it's wrong. Okay, so here's the deal. You don't have to get all excited about checking every detail of the problem unless you want to be absolutely, absolutely sure. But here's the deal. Any solution, if it makes the denominator 0, it's not a solution. Go back to the denominator. 4 does not make that denominator 0, so it, it's good. 1.5 does not make that denominator equal 0, so we're good. So we can keep both of these solutions. Okay, So less of a big deal this time. We got lucky. Okay, so okay, so here, here's a quick recap. Multiply both sides by the least common denominator. The denominator should cancel out. Denomin the least common denominator is the denominator that has all of the factors of all the denominators. Solve it. Once that happens, solve it like you would any other problem. And then check for any extraneous solutions. So any solutions that make the denominator equal 0, they're out. Okay, not allowed. All right, so... Looking at one more example, and then we'll be done. If I'm going to look at the uh, least common denominator, remember it has to have all factors of the denominator. Well, 
it, that, it would be really nice if I knew what the factors of all the denominators were. Okay, so I, I know I need an x plus 2. I know I need an x minus 3. Okay, so automatically my least common denominator so far is x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, now if this thing has any other factors in it, then I need more. Okay, so this is x minus 3, x plus 2. Let's just double check that. x squared comes from x times x. Outer would be uh, plus 2x. Inner would be a negative 3. Yep, that gives me that. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So I'm good. And notice that x minus 3 and x plus 2 are already in my least common denominator. So I am good to go. So we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 2 times x minus 3. Now, please be careful in this step. I, you, I'm going to use the T word. I know you don't like it, but uh, you're going to have to think. Okay? So this whole thing is going to multiply this fraction. And when I do that, x plus 2 is going to cancel out or divide out. And that leaves x times x minus 3 plus plus. Now, I'm, I have to take the entire thing again times the next fraction, okay, times the next thing. Even if it's not a fraction, I have to multiply it, okay? This time, x minus 3 is going to cancel out, leaving just the x plus 2 and the 5. Now, you don't have to write the 5 on the left. I just know that's where most people are used to seeing it, okay? And then on the other side of the equation, the x minus 3s divide out and the x plus 2s divide out. So this whole denominator is now gone, leaving 25. This is not a big deal. This is something you know how to solve. So this is x squared minus 3x plus 5x plus 10 equals 25. x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. I just subtracted 25 from both sides because I need standard form for a quadratic and uh, I combine like terms, okay? All right, we're getting close. I'm excited. Uh, this is actually fairly easy to factor. Again, I know some of you are convinced that quadratic formula is the way to go for every possible situation. Uh, just a reminder that in order to use the quadratic formula, you need to know the quadratic formula, okay? All right, I'm going back to factoring, though. Uh, x squared, the signs are different because Different signs get multiplied to make a negative 15. Uh, factors of 15 are 3 and 5, or 1 and 15. Well, plus 5 minus 3 will get me the plus 2x for the middle. So if x plus 5 equals 0, x equals negative 5. If x minus 3 equals 0, x equals 3. Okay, now here's that big but. If either of these make a denominator 0, then I have to get rid of them. I have to get rid of that one that does, okay? So negative uh, 5 plus 2, that doesn't make that 0. It doesn't make that 0. And the same factors are here, so negative 5 is good, okay? Uh, x equals 3. Well, x equals 3 doesn't make that denominator 0, but it does make that denominator 0. So negative 3, I'm sorry, positive 3 is out. Okay, so here's the deal. When you're doing this, I need to see that you saw the 3, that, you know, it was part of your solving process. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just the act of multiplying both sides by something with a variable in it can add a solution that wasn't there. It can give us an extra solution. Okay, so again, it's, there's no mistake in there. It's just you have to be aware that this process can get you a solution that doesn't actually work. Okay, so 3 was an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is not a solution. Okay, an extraneous solution is something that we thought might have been a solution. It is extra. It is wrong. You dump it. Okay, so the only solution here was x equals negative 5. All right, uh, if any of that is, you know, going too fast, you know you are in control. Rewind, replay, come visit often. Thank you so much. Oh, and bye.